another camera comparison. This time, between two cameras that really shouldn't be a fair fight. We've got the ZV-1 and the a7 III. Can you tell which one's which? I shouldn't have looked at it. Maybe I looked at the wrong one. Maybe this is the ZV-1 and this is the a7 III. Or maybe it's not. They're both shooting in picture profile 10, aperture priority, uh, letting everything else kind of handle itself here. Can you tell which is which? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm the Tactical Traveler. I'm a straight shooter who just tells it like it is. So if you value an honest opinion from a person who actually uses his own money to purchase the gear that he uses and reviews on his channel, you ought to consider uh, hitting the subscribe button down below. Today, we have another Sony camera battle upon us. The little ZV-1 that could takes on the mighty Sony A7 III. Will this little vlogging camera hold its own in a vlogging test against what some would arguably say has been the vlogging camera to have for the last two years? Let's take these cameras outside, put them on a little vlogging selfie stick and see how they stack up against each other. Let's do it. All right, well, it, it might be obvious, but the A7 III is this one right here. And the ZV-1 is this guy right here. Maybe you can tell. I can't really tell out here yet. When we get back inside, maybe I'll uh, do a little bit of studio talking and, and we'll decide if it's really worth it getting a camera that costs more than twice as much than this little guy right here. Now, all the audio I'm doing with the uh, a7 III, I'm running it with my Rode Wireless Go. It's just easier. My arm is about to fall off and die because this a7 III is ridiculously heavy. All right, so look. Look here what we've got for the for the a7 III setup is this I mean look at the difference this is what I'm carrying with the a7 III and then over here this is the ZV-1 this is the difference so we're not going to keep carrying both of these because this is ridiculous to try and carry the field of view is a little wider I went out to 17 using the Tamron 17 to 28 and here you get what you get with the ZV-1 right so let's put one of these cameras down and we'll do all of our tests like we did with this camera versus the A6400 and see what we get. Starting here on the A7 III. Hopefully it'll make the other one feel a lot lighter when we get that started. Ugh, the dog's about to attack me. My neighbors think I'm crazy. So how's the image quality here? I would imagine A7 III is renowned for excellent image quality. Is it doing good? Does it live up to its reputation for phenomenal image quality here? We're shooting 4K, 24 frames a second. Now, using the external monitor, I don't have the famous Sony autofocus. It, it disables face tracking with the monitor that I have because I don't have the fancy Atomos Ninja recorder. I just have a rinky-dink uh, Andy Cine 4K monitor and it uh, doesn't allow me to record to it, but it does the job. I don't really use it much on this camera. I've got to confess, this camera I mostly use for stills, maybe some studio stuff, maybe some comparisons like this. The A6400 video-wise is, is pretty darn good, and I, I pretty much use that one exclusively for video. And my ZV-1 for, for vlogging. So how's the image quality on this compare to the image quality on the ZV-1? What do you think? Is it that big of a difference to be more than twice the cost? Okay, here we are on my favorite little vlogging camera, the ZV-1, and we're going to compare this image quality. What do you think compared to what we just did? I'm going to kind of walk the same little pattern I did. We'll do a, a stabilization test after. This is kind of a bonus one right now. I just have on the standard stabilization. How does this image quality stack up against the a7-3's image quality? It's pretty windy outside today. I'm using the onboard mics on this. I did another video where I went over various microphone options for this ZV-1. I'll put a link to that video right up here in the corner. You guys go check that one out if you want to see ways to improve your audio with the ZV-1. How is this image quality compared to what we just saw with the a7 III? I can tell you what, it's a whole lot easier to hold this camera. I felt like I was shaking and dying with the, uh, the a7 III on that giant camera, but that's because I've gotten used to the ZV-1 and I think the image quality it's pretty good on this. I haven't really done a comparison like this side by side. So when I go inside to edit, it's going to be the first time I see how these things stack up against each other. Like I said, both are in HLG2, picture profile 10. 
And this is what we get. Not bad. Next test is gonna be image stabilization. The ZV-1 doesn't have any in-body stabilization at all. It has sort of an electronic. So this is the standard electronic stabilization. We're gonna walk and talk. And this is what you can get with the standard stabilization. Not too bad, but it can be better. It can be better. But with that better stabilization, there is going to be consequences. So let's up this stabilization and see the consequences. All right. Well, now we have the active stabilization on. And you can see the consequences cropped in quite a bit. But what do we get for that crop? We get a much, much better stabilization. The A7 III, which we're going to go to next, has inbuilt 5-axis image stabilization on the sensor. But let's not kid ourselves. That Sony IBIS is not very good. This stabilization beats it by a long shot. Unfortunately, it's just kind of cropped in. I haven't moved the camera any closer or further than it was before. It's, this is just what you get. So image stabilization on the A7 III. This really isn't even fair because this rig is so heavy right now with using this big tripod and everything as a selfie stick that it's probably given it better stabilization than it deserves because honestly, heavier, the heavier the camera or the rig is that you're carrying, the more stable that you're gonna be. It's with, you have that super lightweight stuff, it just gives you all those little micro jitters and, and really shaky stuff. So probably if I was just hand holding this and it wasn't on, this monstrosity of a tripod and uh, with the monitor on it, it would be much less stable. But this is Sony stabilization. There's only one version in, in the, uh, the A7 III, and this is it. This lens has no image stabilization or optical steady shot is what they call it on the Sony lenses. Some of the native Sony lenses do have optical steady shot, but these Tamron lenses that I prefer to use do not have any stabilization whatsoever built into the lens but how does it compare to the zv1 on stabilization okay so now we are in fully automatic mode program mode whatever you want to call it where the camera is deciding everything it's deciding the shutter speed the aperture iso is on auto everything is being decided by the camera and i've also switched to sony's like basic picture profile so this is picture profile one this is sort of their basic movie profile with no adjustments these are the colors. So we can kind of compare the color science with this camera versus the newer color science. It's in the ZV-1. The ZV-1, I also should note, has eye autofocus. This camera just has face detection autofocus, which is disabled because I'm uh, using the external monitor. So that's kind of not really fair. I should probably unplug the monitor and let you guys get a look at the face detection. But So now I've unplugged the monitor and we are, have enabled the face detection autofocus. So I don't know if the focus was losing me before. We'll walk around a little bit here and see. I'm still in picture profile one, fully automatic mode with face detection turned on. So this is if you had no monitor and this is what you'd get if you don't know how to use this camera at all. You just, you were influenced by someone to buy a full frame camera like the Sony a7 III or maybe someone bought it for you as a gift. And this is what, what you'd get if you really don't know how to use anything on the camera. You just want to turn it on, put it on automatic. Here's the video. Here's the quality video that you'd get from that. It's not bad, I imagine, and face tracking is good. Is it tracking me okay? Like, what if I turn and look back? Do you get me? I have no idea. We'll see. Okay, so here is the auto exposure for the ZV-1. We are in intelligent auto mode, which this is something that I think this really beats the, the A7 III in, the intelligent auto mode with the eye auto tracking the color science. We are in uh, their basic picture profile now. When you go into intelligent auto on the ZV-1, you, you really don't, you don't have control of any of that stuff. We do have mm, background defocus. So we can get the blurrier background with this, this mode here. But everything else is pretty much shut off. You just have, the camera picks everything for you. And I think it does a pretty darn good job. So how does this color science, it's the latest color science for Sony compare to the color science in the a7 III, which came out in 2018, when we're in this picture profile. I think HLG, we should make them look pretty close, but there could even be a difference there. I'm not 100% sure. Let's take these cameras inside and compare them in sort of a studio setting and see what we get that way. Plus it's hot and there's bugs and it's miserable like a jungle out here. So let's go inside. Okay, so we're inside. Both cameras are still in automatic mode. Can you tell which camera is which? 
Is it obvious? The color science, just looking at the monitors, is a little bit different. Um, there's a little bit of a disadvantage because my light source is over here. So the camera that's on this side is going to just have a little bit more light than, than this one. But, you know, and with what I'm working with, I've done the best I could. Can you tell which camera is which? There's one camera right here, looking right at it. There's another camera right here. I'll give you a second to, to drink in the glory and just spit on the microphone. Just drink it in, drink in the glory while I spittle. Um, this is the Sony a7 III. This is the ZV-1. Not bad. Now, face detection is off because I have the monitor hooked on top here, which I, I can tell when I do this, I've got like product showcase. Basically, zone autofocus is what product showcase is on, on this guy over here. So you switch basically from face tracking to like zone autofocus, which is what we're using here. And you see, then you've got this, so I can hold, you know, hold a product up. I can say, oh yes, this is the lens cap for my Tamron. And then when I come back, honestly, I don't really use product showcase mode. That's not something that's important to me, but it could be important to you. So I thought it was worth mentioning that basically those functions on the ZV-1 product showcase and background defocus basically switch the ZV-1 into aperture priority and into zone autofocus. Uh, at least that's my opinion. I could be wrong. Yell at me in the comments. Tell me I'm stupid. So let's go ahead and put these cameras in more of a manual exposure mode and see the differences that we can get with. Okay. So what I've done here is now both of the cameras are fully manual. I set the white balances using the little custom white balance gimmick here so you can see this is white. I've also turned off the monitor on the a7 III so I can't see myself but I got it all lined up and then just detached the monitor and fingers crossed it's going for the best. The ZV-1 on the other hand has the flip out screen fully, articula fully articulating side flip screen. So what do you think of the pictures here between the ZV-1 and the a7 III? How are they uh how do they compare? I've got the 17 to 28 Tamron on here just to keep it consistent throughout the entire, the entire video and test, but it's not really a fair comparison because you're talking a $700 camera and a $2,000 camera. My whole point of making this video was just to kind of show that you can get a pretty darn good image from this and you don't always need to go and buy this full frame camera. I think it all depends on your usage. If you're just gonna have a YouTube channel and you're gonna walk around and vlog, you don't need this. This camera is more than adequate. I think it's a very good image. It's under a thousand dollars. You can still hook up all of the same audio with it. I'm doing all the audio externally here. You can, oh Jesus, such a rookie mistake there, wasn't it? Was that like that the whole time? I mean, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, whatever. That's, that's rookie, rookie mistake right there. Which camera do you think is better? Do you think it's necessary to buy this full frame camera or, or do you think that you'd be fine with the ZV-1? I think most people for purposes of a YouTube channel only, the ZV-1 is a fine camera and it's gonna get you through most anything that you need to do. The a7 III, as I mentioned earlier, I use primarily as my stills camera. It's a phenomenal video camera. If you watch anything on YouTube in the last two years, you'll see this, is, this has been like the most talked about camera out there, the ZV-1. I'm telling you, that's where it's at. I'm so impressed with this camera and it has been sort of lost in the shuffle this year because of you know the soap opera and drama that is the Canon R5 and its overheating issues. Neither of these cameras overheat, by the way. I haven't ever had a Sony camera overheat, but then again, I, got it. I was always a Canon user, never had a Canon camera overheat either. Let me go ahead and say that before the Canon people jump on me. I switched from Canon to Sony because I wanted one single lens mount, basically. I, I had the M mount, you had the EFS, and the EF, and now the RF, and it was just very frustrating to me. So Sony just has the E mount. That was my main reason for switching. Just as I grew, I could buy one set of lenses. Which one of these cameras do you like better? ZV-1, A7 III. Do you need an A7 III for a YouTube channel, or will the ZV-1 fork for you? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.